This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's early morning and it's still a little dark outside. Today I'm going out to do macro photography, but first it's time to make some coffee. Even though it's very early, there's already a little bit of wind. I can see that in the grass. And wind and macro photography is just a bad combination because the slightest move of the grass and the leaves would just result in unsharp photos. I'm going to start my trip in the forest and I just hope that these big trees will give me a little bit shelter so that the small leaves and the vegetation will be untouched by the wind. When I'm photographing, a lot of my attention is on the background. I like, if possible, to move myself around, change my position to get an exciting background. And in this case, I really like that graduated background with a bright upper corner. I really think that adds a little to this scene. Compared to wildlife photography, close-up and macro photography is so different. When I'm out to photograph birds, mammals, I sometimes have to wait for days just to see something. But on a day like this, there are just beautiful flowers and insects everywhere. And then I think the challenge is to just actually stay in one place and photograph rather than getting confused about all the beauty and just run around in the forest without actually getting anything. There's now only half an hour to sunrise and the mist is rolling in from the sea. It's so beautiful to see how all the vegetation gets covered in this beautiful white morning dew. I'll leave the forest and go to the meadow to try my luck here and to get the first light from the sun.
The early mornings are probably my favorite time of the day and this morning is no exception. The golden light changes the landscape completely and I want to go to one last location before the wind picks up. It always does that. One of the things I really love about photography is the freedom I have. It's like there are no rules I have to follow. I mean, it's not necessarily about documenting a fox or a flower or a landscape. And I don't have to make sharp photos. Photography is a way to express yourself and you can show that mood you had that morning in the meadow photographing the little blue flower. And this is where creativity really comes in. Shooting through some grass to get a more dramatic foreground and play around with a manual focus just to capture that mood that you want. Because who says a photo has to be sharp? It was a nice morning. Now, in the behind the scenes, I want to talk a little about how I check the light, uh, or to say the quality of the light, the technique I use for that, and a little about handheld macro photography with my new lens, and a little about why I get up before four o'clock in the morning at this time of the year. But uh, first, let's have a coffee. Before we move on, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace lets you build professional looking websites without any knowledge about coding and web design. You simply choose one of the many great looking templates and by dragging and dropping photos and changing the text and colors, you can make it your own. You can create beautiful galleries to showcase your work and it's very easy to update the gallery with your latest photos. It also has built in e-commerce so you can start selling your prints, calendars and digital products. So if you need a new website, head over to squarespace.com to start your 14 days free trial. And you can use the off code Morten Hilmer to get 10% off your first purchase. I've put a link in the description. Last cup. Oops. 
No. So, um, first, a little about the light, because sometimes on uh, when I talk to other photographers, uh, especially the new ones, they really like the sunny weather because it's so beautiful and it's nice. And that is also, that is correct, it is really beautiful for our eyes. And it is really beautiful for backlight. But the problem is with a sensor in the camera, it does not have the same, what to say, dynamic range as our eyes. Imagine you're standing inside a, you know, the, the, the kitchen or the living room and your friends are sitting there next to the window eating. And when you look, you can see everything that's going on at the table, the food, everything, everyone's faces. And you can also see what's outside in the garden, the trees outside. But when you, when you take that photo, you will only see either what's outside and everything inside will be dark, or you will see what's inside and everything outside is uh, too bright. And that is uh, because the, the sensor, the dynamic range of the camera sensor is limited. And that is where uh, you can make HDR photos, but that's a completely different story. When I go out to photograph macro or birds or anything in nature, I do not want this hard light because I will lose some of the details, some of the gradients in the colors. Like when you have green, if you have this moss, you have so many different, uh, what do you say, shades of, of, of uh, green. And on a sunny day, you just see like a few of these fine colors in the green to measure the quality of the light. Like in, what to say, in the beginning, um, I remember I always moved my legs and then I look for the, for the shadows. So if I do like this, I can see a very slight shadow from my hand, just very slight. It's almost like, because of the clouds, it's almost like a softbox. And that is really nice. And if you look here on a sunny day, uh, it's much more like hard. You can see the shadow is becoming very hard. So I love when the light is soft because that is where I get all these beautiful details in the, in the flowers. And that is also the reason why I get up before four o'clock in the morning at this time of the year, because the sun will rise a little after four. And that means it gives me a good time out here. Everything is calm. Like there's still these small dewdrops in the plants, in the flowers, and everything is just so fresh. Already, like now I'm lucky because it's cloudy, but normally already around seven o'clock here in, in Ju uh, July, dew is away, sun is shining from a blue sky, all the colors are just kind of fading a little. And uh, so it really pays off to get up early, even though it's, I, I feel it's a, it's a struggle every single morning. I, doesn't get, no, I don't get used to it, but um, I, I get everything ready in the evening, pack my equipment, make the, like, put the coffee beans ready, so that, and then I have a plan before I go to bed, because if I don't have a plan, I say, I will take it in the morning. No way, I'll just keep sleeping. Um, last thing I just want to talk about is uh, uh, it's uh, actually the first time I felt comfortable with handhelding a macro. Um, and now with a 105mm, uh, the new Nikon set mount, it's my first macro lens with vibration reduction. Uh, I, I used to use the Sigma 150mm uh, and I have that for like 10 years or something like that, but it doesn't have the, the VR. And I really, really like that because now I was photographing the, uh, the little flower over there. And because of the tripod, you probably know that, you know, when you're moving around a macro like this, let's say it's these flowers, and you just want to move your, your camera a little bit, then you do like this. Oh, it's so annoying. But it's also, at the same time, it's so nice to have your camera on the tripod because you can just sit and make that perfect composition, perfect focus. But a lot of the times I actually end up ruining the shot because of the tripod, especially in vegetation like that. Also, 
I really like to move around because sometimes you just have to move your camera like two centimeter or half a centimeter to get the, the background in the frame just as I did with the little flower and um, now I, re I feel, really feel freedom. I'm happy to have my first macro lens with the vibration reduction and I know they are already there. there are a lot of them I've just never really been switching the, the macro lens but now I have one and I'm looking forward to explore the autumn with the, all the spider's web and stuff like that. Um, I think that if you have to, the drawbacks about handhelding is the vibration reduction is fine for, for all these movements, but of course it does not compensate for this movement. Uh, so just one millimeter when you're close to the subject, if the subject is here, just one millimeter that way, away or towards the subject, will result in out of focus photos. So what I, what I try to do is either, either, either use a knee or a, something like put my hand on the ground so that I, I can control the movement this way. And then I can fine tune the composition and look at the screen or in the viewfinder. And yeah, you might have seen I, I use a different grip sometimes, like rather than having my index finger here and the back button out of focus here, I switch so that I have, that is if I'm in a low position, I have my, my index finger to the function button um, the function one button because that is uh, helping me to zoom in or out or uh, change the, the focus mode and then I use my thumb for actually pressing the photo because when I'm down here it's it's awkward it's much more easy for me to do it this way and then I use the the lens function button actually also to zoom in and out so I have a hundred percent zoom on the function one button on the Z6 II and then I have a 50% um, zoom on the lens function button and yeah that works so uh, that was all for now and uh, I think it's time for me to go home because it actually the wind picked up a little bit and it makes it really really hard I always have this window in the morning, like this window of one or two hours before the wind starts. But uh, yeah, take care and uh, see you out there.